Well, hello for you, and welcome to a lesson on polynomial equations. Our goal today is I can use the factor theorem to solve polynomial equations of degrees higher than 2. Uh, up till now, you've been using quadratic equations, which are of degree 2, and that's as high as we got. Um, cubic equations, if we'd solved cubic equations, it was only because we could factor an x out. Um, now we're not going to be able to do that. So solving polynomial equations. Solving a polynomial equation or finding the roots of a polynomial function is easy when things are factored. It really is. It's very, very easy. Uh, so let's have a look at this one in particular. Okay, this is our polynomial equation in factored form. Uh, and you know that in order for this side to be zero, like this side tells us it has to be, um, we only need one of those brackets to be zero. And it can be any of those brackets to be zero. If any of these brackets are zero, the whole thing is going to be zero. Now this two can never be zero, so it doesn't have any kind of uh, effect on the thing at all. Uh, but this bracket here could be zero, and if it is zero, then I could multiply two times zero times this bracket times this bracket. It doesn't matter what's in these brackets, the whole thing will be zero. So this could be negative three. Uh, from this bracket, remember constant term over coefficient, opposite sign, so that could be four-thirds. And the last one could be seven. And if any of those conditions are met, we have solved this equation. So, factored, easy. Not factored, uh, not so easy. Uh, but we do have a few tools at our disposal. Um, so let's have a look at our tools for disposal. Um, that was supposed to fade. It's not fading. I just have to push it out of the way then. There we go, first tool. We can use factor theorem to find a root, and hence a factor of the function. Okay, so we can use factor theorem. Remember, start plugging stuff in uh, to find a root. And once we found a root, then we can factor it further. Um, because we'll know a factor. Uh, so number two. Yeah, it's not going to fade either. So we'll just push it out of the way. Uh, if we know a factor, we can divide it out of the original polynomial, getting a quotient of a lower degree than we started with. Um, so remember when we use synthetic division, we take a linear factor out, and our answer, we always start with one degree lower. Uh, well, that's going to happen. Every time we take a linear factor out, then we get a quotient that is one degree lower, and we can work with it again. And we can keep doing that, getting it one degree lower, one degree lower, until we are at quadratic. And then at quadratic, we can... Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Whoop, uh oh Back, there we go. Um, we can reduce the polynomial until it is quadratic, and then we can factor using trinomial factoring, or you can use a quadratic formula. So once you got it down to quadratic, you're okay to use a quadratic formula. You remember this guy? Negative b e plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Uh, so you can always use that when you get it right down to it. So down here, example 2. Uh, example 2 says solve 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0, and we are going to factor that thing. Now, according to the integral 0 theorem, uh, and actually it's not the integral 0 theorem, it's the rational 0 theorem that we're worried about here, um, I need to figure out what possible things could make this polynomial 0. Now, I know in order to get 2x cubed at the front, uh, I one of my brackets is going to have to have a 2x in it, uh, and then all of the other brackets will have to be x because there's nothing else that can multiply to be 2. Now the back of the bracket has to multiply to be 6. So all of the stuff at the back of the bracket have to be factors of 6, which is a 1, a 2, a 3, or a 6. And of course it's plus or minus in here. So all of the factors that I'm looking for come from this kind of bracket. And so and they can all be a positive or a negative value. So 1 over 2 is a half, 2 over 2 is just 1, uh, 3 over 2 is 3 halves, uh, 6 over 2 is just 3. Remember we're doing constant term over coefficient, that's what my little, when you see my pen going back and forth, -hoo 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 -hoo, that's what I'm doing, constant term over coefficient, constant term over coefficient, constant term over coefficient, constant term 
over coefficient. Now we have to do that with the other coefficient. Constant term over coefficient is 1 over 1, which is 1, which we already have, so I'm not writing it down. Uh, 2 over 1, uh, we don't have, so I'm going to write that down. Uh, 3 over 1 we have, so I'm not going to write that down. And then 6 over 1 we do not have, so I'm going to write that down. Okay, and all of these can be positive or negative value. So we have to sub these in here and figure out which one makes it 0, um, thus uh, finding us one of the answers for this polynomial equation. Now, most of the time I tell you to start here. Start with positive or negative 1. Um, because that goes into everything and in this case that would be really good advice because we find that the polynomial at 1 is actually equal to 0. And if the polynomial at 1 is equal to 0 that means that x minus 1 is a, a factor. So if x minus 1 is a factor then we can use synthetic division uh, putting a 1 here and then all of our coefficients, 2, negative 3, negative 5, and 6. And we'll put a 0 here, add down 2. 1 times 2 is 2, add down negative 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, add down negative 6. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6, add down is 0, which is good because we wanted a factor. And that means that our p of x, if p of x was our original equation, if we called this p at x, p at x can be written as x minus 1 times 2x squared minus x minus 6. If I expand this all out, this is what I'm going to get. And I, I'm only interested when p of x equals 0. So I'm going to put a 0 where p of x is. And I'm going to finish factoring this sucker. I know that the front here has to have a 2x and the back here has to have an x. I know that my signs are different, so one's positive and one's negative, and so the outside and the inside terms here have to have a difference, the product here has to have a difference of 1. Now my choices for the back brackets are 1 and 6, or 2 and 3, and since the number in here is not anywhere near 6 times 2, uh, I'm going to start with two that are closest together. I can't put a 2 in here because there's no common factor, so this must be the 3 bracket and this must be the 2 bracket, and I get a 3x here and a 4x here, and lo and behold, 3x and 4x do in fact have a difference of 1. Now I need them to have a difference of negative 1, so I need the 4 to be negative and the 3 to be positive in order for me to have more negatives than positives and thus negative in the net result. So I'm going to put the negative here so that I get a negative 4x and a positive here. Now, are we done? No, we're not. Because I asked you to actually solve it. So once you've got it factored, you have to say, therefore, x equals 1, uh, 3 over 2, and change the sign, constant term over coefficient, change the sign, and x. And now we are finished. Now I'm going to try to go through the next one a little bit quicker, but it's of higher degree still. It is of degree 4. Bum, bum, bum. Now the first thing we have to do with this one is make sure everything's on one side and zeros on the other. Same as when we did with quadratics before. Um, so I have an x to the fourth minus an x cubed. I need the x squareds next. So this thing has to be subtracted off of both sides. So it's minus 21x squared. Then I've got that plus 41x, and then if I subtract the 20 off of both sides, this is my whole big polynomial. And we're going to call this polynomial, since we're going to need to do our synthetic division a couple of times to get it down to quadratics, um, we're going to call this p1 of x, our original polynomial. Actually, maybe we should call it p0 of x. p0 is the original conditions, p0 kind of. okay. Uh, so we're going to call it p0 of x, this whole thing here. Uh, and we know that since there's no number out here, we're dealing with the integral zero theorem, not the rational zero theorem. So all of our factors, um, or anything that could possibly make this thing zero, has to be a factor of 20. Um, so that would be 1 and 20, 2 and 10, um, 3 doesn't go, but 4 does, and it goes 5 times. So it's one of these things, and of course it could be either positive or negative. Okay. 
Um, and once again, I advise you to start with positive and negative 1. And for this one, that's going to be a really good um, good indicator again. And remember, 1 goes in everything. So 1 is going to be in every single question. So you might want to start with 1 or negative 1. Uh, and then move on to 2 or negative 2 and 4 or negative 4. And just kind of go up from there. Because chances are um, that they're likely smaller things that are going to make it that way. Um, just for these questions, not in everything in general. but um, And it just so happens that if I sub 1 in here, uh, I'm going to get 0. So p naught at 1 equals 0, and that means that x minus 1 is a, a factor. So if x minus 1 is a factor, we're going to use synthetic division. I'm actually going to put that in here. Using synthetic division. Synthetic division. Just a little bit of added communication to say what we're doing. So we're going to use synthetic division to divide out, to divide out x minus 1. So we got 1, negative 1, negative 21, 41, and negative 20. And so using synthetic division, we are going to... Blam! There we go. We've got um, our synthetic division, and so therefore we can say that p naught at x, our original polynomial, equals x minus 1 times our quotient. And it was quartic, so we're going to start with cubic. x cubed, there's no x squared, it's minus 21x plus 20. Now we have to do it again. And we're going to call this thing here p1 of x. That's not an x. Doesn't even look remotely like an x. x. Okay. So if we call this p1 of x, uh, then we're going to do this again. And it all has to be factors of 20 once again. So we're still looking at all of these factors up here. And once again, we get really lucky when we realize that p1 of x is actually, or p1 at 1 is equal to 0. And that means that x minus 1 is a factor. And boom! There, we just repeated ourselves. So we have one instance of using synthetic division right here, and our second instance of using synthetic division here. So that means that our original polynomial again, so therefore, our original polynomial, p0 of x, has two of these things, x minus 1 times x minus 1, or we can put a squared there if we wanted to. Original polynomial, p minus 1 squared, x minus 1 squared, uh, and this quotient, x squared plus x minus 20. And we can factor that further. If you don't remember how to factor it further, you can use the quadratic formula, but I'd rather that you didn't. Uh, I'd like you to know how to factor. So we put x's at the front. I know that the signs are different, so I get 1 plus and 1 minus, and I'm going to put them in because it's a simple trinomial. They have to multiply to 20 and subtract to 1. So that's a 5 and a 4, and my 5 has to be positive because I get more positives in the middle, so 5 and 4. So are we done? No, we're not done because we were asked what happens when that equals 0. This is what we were actually asked for. When is our original polynomial 0? And that happens when x equals 1, which we found out twice that it's going to happen when x equals 1, um, and negative 5, and positive 4. So, cool, huh? We got that solved. Solved by factoring. And there's our answer. I'm going to just circle that. Okay, now the next one we have is actually asking us to go kind of backwards. They've given us the roots and they want us to find the equation. And they want us to find the equation in standard form. Factored form would be so much easier, but, um, well, I just wanted to make it a little more interesting. So we're going to put it in standard form. Now, we do know that when we worked 
before, if we found a 0 of 1, like we did up here, that I knew immediately that x minus 1 was the factor. Um, so it's the same thing here. If I have these, then I know that a factor of our equation must have been x minus 5. And if I have 3 as a root, I know that x minus 3 must have been a factor. And if I have a negative 6 as a 0, that must mean that x minus negative 6 is a factor, but this is something that only grade uh, 9s do to me. You guys would know that that needs to be a plus. Uh, and of course, since it's a, an equation, it says write equations, we need an equal 0 after that. So this equation will have those roots. Now, this is not in standard form, this is in factored form, so I need to expand. Uh, I'm going to leave this x minus 5 the way it is to start with, and I'm going to expand these brackets, and I'm going to do it very quickly. x times x is x squared, x times 6 is 6x, and x times negative 3 is negative 3x, and positive 6x and negative 3x is positive 3x, and then negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. Hopefully you remember how to expand. Now I'm going to expand this out again and this is going to take a couple of minutes here because I go x and multiply it through the brackets and then I go negative 5 and multiply it through the brackets and then I simplify and so it may take a little bit or we could be done in no time at all. Okay, So here's our expanded form and we notice we had six terms here that simplified down to four for our standard form cubic equation. Now the next one is a little bit harder. This is one that um, involves radicals and so you're going to have to remember your work on radicals from grade 11. Um, but we first need to know, and this is obviously one that did not factor um, because it's got a radical in it so we must have used the quadratic formula to get it. So this is actually 1 plus root 3 uh, and it's also 1 minus root 3. So there are two factors. And so we're going to start, or not our two factors, our two zeros. We're going to start by writing down the factors, even though it doesn't factor, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But it will. x minus 1 plus root 3. That's exactly the same as we did up here. When I had 5, I did x minus 5. So now I have 1 plus root 3, so I do x minus 1 plus root 3. Um, up here I had 3, so I did x minus 3. Here I have 1 minus root 3, so I'm going to do x minus 1 minus root 3. Looks messy, but it's really not. And we know that this is going to, come, going to be a quadratic uh, because there's only two roots, and remember two roots means quadratic. So now I have to expand this. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the inner brackets and just switch the signs on them when I remove it. So I get x minus 1 plus Oop, not plus, bloop, minus root 3, and x minus 1 plus root 3 equals 0. And now I have to expand this, and if you just excuse me for one second, there we have the expansion. Um, now I got that, I've noticed there's nine terms here, I got that by taking x and multiplying it through the brackets, and taking negative 1 and multiplying it through the brackets, and taking negative root 3 and multiplying it through the brackets. Now once we do that, a nice thing happens. Let's take a look at the terms that have a root in them. I've got a positive root 3x and a negative root 3x, which means that I don't have any more root 3x's they cancel each other out. And he, these other ones that have a root 3 in them, notice I've got a negative root 3 and a positive root 3, which means I now have no more root 3's and I have no more root 3's in the whole thing at all. Um, so now I collect up the other stuff that's left. I got an x squared, x squared. I got two negative x's here, so negative 2x, and then I have a positive 1 and a negative 3, which gives me negative 2 and that equals 0, and there is my equation. Now, the next example involves a little bit of a trick. It's called a little substitution. What I want you to notice here is this thing is actually quadratic. I know it looks quartic, but it's actually quadratic because I can write x to the fourth as x squared squared. So what I have is 4x squared squared minus 25x squared 
plus 36. And so what I have here is a squared term, a term with just an x, well, it's an x squared, but a term that has an exponent of 1 on it anyway, and then I have a constant term. So that is quadratic. Uh, to make it look even more quadratic, I'm going to make this substitution. I'm going to say, let's let n equal x squared. And if I let n equal x squared, what I end up with is 4n squared minus 25, and there's an x squared there that I'm going to substitute in an n, and plus 36 equals 0. Now this is just a quadratic that can be factored. Um, there's no common factor, so I'm going to go straight to brackets equals 0, and I know the front uh, has to either be 1 and 4 or 2 and 2, and the back has to be 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, or 6 and 6. Now that's an awful lot of things, and I have to make a guess on this, and I'm going to make a really educated guess by looking through here and seeing that every single pair has at least one even number. So I can't put these in a bracket with another even number. And so I got to get rid of 2 and 2 because then I wouldn't be able to put anything in a bracket with a 2. Uh, so it must be 1n and 4n. And if it's 1n and 4n, uh, I know I can't put any even number in with the 4 because I can't have a common factor in there. So that eliminates this possibility because they're both even. So I couldn't put a 2 in there or an 18 in there. And that also eliminates this possibility because I couldn't put a 6 or a 6 in there. So my choices are these three. Now I'm going to start, since 25 is nowhere near 36 times 4, uh, I'm going to start with numbers that are closer together. If this were a bigger number in here, creeping closer to 36 times 4, I would want some bigger factors multiplying with this 4. Uh, but since it's not, um, it's, it's better to start with the factors that are closer together. Uh, I can't put a 4 in here, so that must be the 9, if it's 4 and 9. Uh, and then the 4 goes over here. So now let's check because I need my outside my inside terms. My two, the, the signs in the brackets are the same and they're both negative. So I can put a negative here and a negative here. Now let's just double check. This is 16n, negative 16n, and this out here is negative 9n. And 16 and 9 go together, negative 16, negative 9 go together to make negative 25, so I actually found it. I didn't have to make too many guesses because I used some of my reasoning. So what that actually means, now for this to be equal to 0, either n equals 4 or n equals constant term over coefficient, change the sign. But remember, I didn't want n in the first place, I want to know what x is, so I have to substitute back in. Uh, but n equals x squared. And if n equals x squared, then x squared has to equal 4, which means x has to equal the square root of 4, which is plus or minus 2. Um, or uh, x squared has to equal 9 quarters. Um, or x equals uh, the square root of 9 quarters, which is going to be plus or minus 3 halves. So there is my actual answer to the original problem um, that I did in two steps with a substitution. So that's just a little trick on how to do something with a substitution. Now the next one is solving a cubic um, that factors. Uh, this is a sum of cubes. It could be written as x cubed plus 2 cubed. And if it's written as x2 x cubed plus 2 cubed, my first step to factoring is just strip off the cubes, x plus 2. And now I can get the quadratic factor by noticing that pattern. I know I need an x squared here so that when x multiplies with x squared, I get x cubed. And I know the back has to be, oh, that's not a 2, that should be a 3. Boop, boop. I know the back is going to have to be uh, 9, so that 9 times 3 gives me that 27, or in other words, 3 squared. 
So the back here has to be 9. Then you multiply the two things together, you get 3x, and it's actually a negative 3x because we got to swap the signs. So from this bracket, because we want this whole thing to equal 0, from this bracket, x equals negative 3. From this bracket, which does not factor, we have to use x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Sorry, that's a new tune. Um, don't want to confuse you on that one. Um, but we're going to sub into that, so here we go. Now, when we use a quadratic formula, when we get down to this part and we have a negative under the square root, we know that there are no more real roots. But there are complex roots, and I'm going to show you how to simplify this uh, by telling you one little thing. This is in the complex realm, and we can simplify it slightly uh, by letting you know that I can take this negative out of the square root if I call it i. Um, in the complex number system, i is defined as the square root of negative 1. And so I'm going to take that square root of negative 1 out of there and call it i. And then what I actually get is x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 27 i over 2. Now the square root of 27 can be simplified further because 27 equals 9 times 3 and 9 is a perfect square. So I can take 9 out of the square root and call it 3. So this is 3 plus or minus 3 root 3i divided by 2. And that's the answer to that one. Now the very last thing we're going to do, and I'm going to try and do it very, very quickly here, uh, is solve using technology. So I'm going to need the graphing calculator for this one uh, because this one in fact does not factor. And what we want to do, what I have graphed here, is the function y equals x cubed minus 6x plus 1. And we want to find this, this, and this. And we're going to do that with a graphing calculator. So there's my graphing calculator with that plugged into it already. And when I graph it, it's going to look suspiciously like this one over here. Uh, and we are going to use uh, the trace and the zero function to find each of these zeros um, using the graphing calculator. So what we have to do is go second trace and we choose number two, which is zero because we're finding the zeros of the function. And then we go to the zero we want to find. I'm going to start with the leftmost zero first and I'm very close to the zero I want to find. Now I pay attention to the fact that it says left bound and I press the left arrow key a couple of clicks and press enter. Now it says right bound and so I press the right arrow key a few clicks until I'm past the root and I press enter. And now it says guess so I go back to the root or the zero or whatever you want to call it and press enter and I find that it's negative 2.5. So this first one here is x equals negative 2.5. Let's do that again. Uh, second trace, 0, and now I'm going to cursor over to the second 0. And now I pay attention to the fact that it says left bound, hit the left arrow key a couple of times, enter. Now it says right bound, so I hit the right arrow key a few times, press enter. And now that my guess, I go back to the center, press enter, and that's 1.2 uh, or 0.17. Um, so 0 0.17 is our other x value. Now I'm going to do this one more time. Second trace 2 over to the last 0 and now it's asking me left bound so I press the left key a couple of clicks enter. Right bound I press the right key a few clicks press enter and guess let's go back to the middle press enter and we get uh, 2.4 approximately. So this one is 2 point four x equals and that is how you solve using um, a technological gizmo um, more specifically the graphing calculator uh, that ends this just shy of the half hour mark